Two startup companies are attempting something that sounds almost impossible, and they're doing it off the coast of California right now. One is building underwater farms on the ocean floor, while the other deploys wave-powered buoys that turn seawater into drinking water without using any electricity at all. Traditional desalination has repeatedly failed in California because of environmental concerns. The Huntington Beach plant would have cost $1.4 billion for 50 million gallons per day, and regulators killed it just like they've killed similar projects before. What makes these two companies different is that they've found ways around the problems that stopped everyone else, and both secured major permits in 2025. Ocean Well places pods 1,300 feet below the surface, using the crushing pressure of the ocean itself to filter seawater. Oneka Technologies anchors buoys offshore that harvest wave energy without a single connection to the electrical grid. Both claim their technology could deliver water at a fraction of traditional costs. And here's where it gets interesting. Both are already testing in California waters. August 2019 marked the founding of Oceanwell by three people with wildly different backgrounds. CEO Robert Bergstrom spent 25 years in the water industry and previously built Seven Seas Water into a $500 million company with 500 employees operating across the Caribbean, which Morgan Stanley later sold to EQT. Charlie McGuera came from Goldman Sachs, where he served as global head of metals trading and went on to lead two fintech startups, including one that reached unicorn status. The third founder, Dr. Michael Porter, built the very first prototype of their technology in his kitchen in San Diego County. Their advisory team includes Tim Quinn, who spent more than 40 years in California water policy as former executive director of the Association of California Water Agencies, along with Michael Gerds, who previously served as subsea projects manager at Chevron. The concept behind their technology sounds simple, though executing it requires extraordinary engineering. Reverse osmosis membranes sit on the ocean floor at 400 meters depth, which puts them in what scientists call the aphotic zone, where no sunlight penetrates. Cold, dark, and mostly lifeless conditions exist down there, and that's exactly what makes it work. 600 to 700 pounds per square inch. That's the natural hydrostatic pressure at that depth. Traditional desalination plants burn enormous amounts of electricity, generating that kind of pressure artificially. But Ocean Well lets gravity and the weight of the ocean do the work instead. Each pod measures about 40 feet long with a cylindrical shape, and commercial versions will span approximately 25 feet wide. A single pod produces 1 million gallons of drinking water per day, while using roughly 2,250 kilowatt hours per acre foot, compared to about 3,500 kilowatt hours for traditional desalination. That translates to a 30 to 40 percent energy reduction. Environmental advantages show up in the brine disposal process. Traditional plants discharge waste at roughly double the salinity of normal seawater, creating dead zones where marine life cannot survive. Ocean Well releases brine through risers 50 feet above the ocean floor at only 5 to 10 percent above ambient salinity, and deep water currents spread it thin almost immediately. Their patent-pending intake system uses multiple layers of mesh with openings under 500 microns, combined with low-velocity intake that prevents marine organisms from getting pulled in. The company says the system filters out bacteria, viruses, pesticides, PFAS chemicals, and microplastics, along with salt. $14 million in total funding has come in over the years. Between 2019 and 2023, about $4 million arrived from American and European angel investors. December 2023 brought a $236,000 grant from the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation's pitch to pilot program one of only eight projects selected nationally. November 2024 saw an $11 million Series A close, led by Kubota Corporation of Japan with participation from the Hemingway family office connected to Carrick's ports. Santa Monica Bay, four and a half miles off the coast of Malibu, at 400 meters depth. That's where Water Farm 1 would sit, with initial capacity of 10 million gallons per day, scaling up to 60 million gallons using approximately 60 pods, Full capacity could serve roughly 250,000 people, with a target delivery date of 2030. The coalition backing this project keeps growing. Las Virgenes Municipal Water District leads the partnership, 
and serves more than 70,000 residents. Caleguas Municipal Water District joined with its 650,000 customers, along with City of Burbank Water and Power. Seven agencies now make up the consortium, and a broader working group includes 25 California public water agencies, with eight having signed letters of intent for feasibility studies. March 21, 2025 marked the start of pilot testing at Las Virgenas Reservoir in Westlake Village. They chose a freshwater environment because its biologically active conditions are actually more challenging than the relatively lifeless deep ocean where commercial systems would operate. Bergstrom put it bluntly when discussing why he entered this industry. At Ocean Well, we've developed a new technology to rehydrate a drying world. I chose water almost 30 years ago because I did my research and the trends were just inexorable. We are going to be in deep, deep trouble. Mark Gold from the Natural Resources Defense Council offered his assessment. It can potentially provide us Californians with a reliable water supply that doesn't create toxic brine that impacts marine life nor does it have intakes that suck the life out of the ocean. Oneka Technologies emerged from a student project at the Université de Sherbrooke in Quebec, Canada, founded in 2015 by mechanical engineering graduates Dragon Tudic and Renaud Lafortune. The company name means water in the Mohawk language, and what they've built operates 100% on wave motion without any external electricity, fuel, or solar panels for the desalination process. Surface buoys tethered to seafloor anchors rise and fall with the waves, activating a patented mechanism that drives hydraulic pumps. Those pumps pressurize seawater and push it through reverse osmosis membranes right inside the buoy. Fresh water travels to shore through a pipeline using residual wave energy, while concentrated brine releases offshore, where wave action disperses it quickly. Their commercial product, the Iceberg class, spans approximately 26 feet in diameter and produces 13,200 gallons of fresh water daily, enough for anywhere from 100 to 3,000 people. A smaller humanitarian version called the Ice Cube measures about 5 feet across and produces 265 gallons per day. Their upcoming glacier class could produce up to 132,000 gallons daily, potentially serving more than 100,000 people. Deployment requires water depths between 35 and 98 feet, positioned between one-tenth of a mile and three miles offshore, with minimum wave heights of one meter for operation. The ninth-generation design handles waves up to 20 feet without intervention and carries an expected 15-year lifespan with quarterly maintenance. Funding has come from multiple sources over the years. May 2016 brought a $50,000 prize followed by two million Canadian dollars in 2018 from Angie Quebec and AQC Capital. June 2021 saw five and a half million Canadian dollars led by Innovacorp and Baruch Future Ventures, and September 2023 brought a 12 and a half million Canadian dollar Series A led by the Hoffaker family. Government support has been substantial. $729,000 came from the Department of Energy's Waves to Water Prize in April 2022 when they won the grand prize. 6.7 million arrived from Canada's Ocean Supercluster, 4.9 million from Sustainable Development Technology Canada, and 3.4 million from the U.S. Department of Energy's Powering the Blue Economy Initiative. The Resilient Sea Project will place an iceberg-class buoy half a mile offshore in Noyo Harbor, Fort Bragg, with a three-inch pipeline carrying fresh water to shore at 13,000 200 gallons per day capacity. The pilot runs for 12 months, and the timing matters because Fort Bragg relies on Noyo River surface flows. During the 2021 drought, brackish water intruded into their system and forced emergency portable desalination equipment into service. A wave-powered system working independently of the grid could provide backup during future droughts without depending on infrastructure that might fail during emergencies. One point $49 million from the California Department of Water Resources, plus another $1.5 million in state investment, is backing this pilot. And the permitting milestones have been historic. May 28, 2025, brought approval from the Fort Bragg Planning Commission for the initial study and mitigated negative declaration. August 21, 2025, saw the California State Lands Commission approve the lease. 
Approvals still pending include the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, U.S. Coast Guard, California Coastal Commission, and California Department of Fish and Wildlife. What makes this notable is that it marks the first seawater desalination pilot to complete California's CEQA process since regulations changed in 2015. Summer 2026 is the target for full deployment, following mooring installation in spring of that year. Zero greenhouse gas emissions during operation, with projected savings of approximately 50 tons of carbon dioxide over the pilot period. Brine discharge increases salinity by only 30 to 50 percent above seawater, compared to 80 to 150 percent for conventional plants. 60 micron intake mesh, finer than human hair, minimizes impact on marine organisms. Both companies qualified for the $119 million XPRIZE water scarcity competition running through 2028. OceanWell earned recognition as a Cleantech 50 to watch company, while Oneka won the Department of Energy Waves to Water Prize Grand Prize in April 2022. OceanWell chases utility scale capacity with water farms producing up to 60 million gallons per day for major population centers. Oneka pursues distributed production with modular units deployable in increments, trading raw scale for energy independence that works in remote communities, on islands, and during emergencies when grid power fails. Capital costs at Ocean Well could run approximately one-third of traditional desalination plants. Oneka claims water production costs under $2 per cubic meter, which they say runs potentially four times lower than some utilities. Neither company has produced commercial-scale water yet, and most cost and efficiency claims remain company-sourced without independent verification. Long-term equipment durability in marine environments stays unproven for both technologies. OceanWell hasn't filed California Coastal Commission permit applications yet. Maintenance requirements at 400-meter depth remain unknown, and potential interactions between pods, hoses, and marine mammals haven't been fully assessed. Oneka hasn't disclosed unit purchase and installation costs, and their 15-year lifespan claim is relatively new. Both still need California Coastal Commission approval, which has historically stopped desalination projects cold. Their offshore lower-impact designs may face fewer objections than traditional coastal plants that pull in huge volumes of nearshore water and discharge concentrated brine at single points along the coast. Pods sitting on the ocean floor at 1,300 feet using the crushing weight of the Pacific to squeeze fresh water from salt. Buoys bobbing in the waves, converting endless motion into hydraulic pressure that drives desalination without consuming a single watt of grid electricity. California's water future may depend on technologies that sounded like science fiction just a few years ago. Ocean Well targets 2030 for commercial delivery through its seven-agency Southern California Consortium. Oneka expects operations at Fort Bragg by summer 2026, which would provide the first real-world proof of concept in California waters. The question isn't whether alternative desalination technology exists anymore. The question is whether these systems can prove commercial viability at scale while navigating California's demanding regulatory environment. Success would change how California addresses water scarcity, achieving what traditional desalination never could gaining both environmental and community acceptance while delivering the fresh water that the state desperately needs. If you found this video valuable, consider subscribing to stay updated on how these projects develop. Drop a comment below with your thoughts on which technology has the better chance of transforming California's water supply. And if you want to see more coverage of engineering breakthroughs solving real-world problems, let us know what topics you'd like us to explore next.